There's a brand new critical bug in Windows Server. Don't wait, patch. So Matt, tell us a little more about this uh, zero logon attack. This bug is wild. So this is uh, a bug in Windows Server, a company called Secura found it and reported it a while ago. It has been patched. So there are patches available. I highly recommend you go find them before I even get into what the bug is. Highly recommend you patch for this. And this was in the latest Microsoft Patch Tuesday. So, so what does this bug mean? Um, this bug lets you become any computer account on the domain. Um, and ultimately, the upshot of this is you can basically take over the domain through various steps you could take at that point. It's a bug within the cryptography of the net logon service within Windows, which is sort of how uh, computers uh, update and, and sync passwords on the domain. Um, so part of this algorithm, I'm going to go a little bit in depth here, um, is that the, the server and client authentication in net logon uses a shared secret. And there's actually a function that they use a very kind of um, out of the ordinary algorithm for the encryption of AES CFB8 or 8-bit cipher feedback mode. And this has to do a little bit with initialization vectors. And I, I, I do kind of want to discuss it, but I realized that I could go too deep in the weeds here. Basically, the upshot of the bug is somebody made a mistake when they implemented it. That initialization vector that's supposed to provide randomness was set to all zeros. So in, in certain situations, like one out of every 256 tries, um, you might get a key that starts with a zero. And because of the way that the algorithm works, it basically zeros out everything through the, the XORing that it's doing. So um, as it turns out, you can, you can use this to set like blank passwords for these computer accounts on the domain and then take further steps to escalate privileges. Uh, it's wild. Um, I really recommend people read the paper associated with this because they do a great job of explaining it. Um, and just because of the, the time, amount of time it would take to explain all the details and all the different scenarios, um, we probably can't talk about it in depth here, but there is a fix as well as a patch. Um, so they, they say there are certain things you can do to sort of mitigate as well. Uh, but ultimately, this is a, a bug that you must be aware of if you run uh, Active Directory in your environment. Uh, because of how critical this is. You can go from like any any machine joined to the domain, you can go to completely on the domain very quickly. So Matt, do we know whether anyone is actually, whether is this, it has, this bug has been exploited? That's a great question. So the folks who found the bug reported it quietly to Microsoft and had them patch it. They have released a tool to check for the presence of the bug. They have not released any exploit code for very good reasons. It's going to take some time for people to patch this bug. Um, so as far as I know, there's no evidence that anyone is exploiting it in the wild. But now that the bug is public knowledge, you can bet there are people who are going to go out and try and exploit it. So as of as of today, as of taping, I have not heard of any active exploitation, but I don't think it'll be that long, uh, especially given how powerful this bug is. Wow. So. Um... Yeah, this is crazy. I mean, I guess another thing is that companies should really take a look at what's going on in their network, assuming, you know, the attacker would have to already be on the network to exploit this, right? So, um, and the, one of the things about it is that in order to successfully exploit it, you do have to make a bunch of requests. Okay. Um, it is in some, the funny thing is computer accounts apparently don't usually have uh, attempt limits. So like if you were to try and guess 256 passwords, for any other account on the domain, you, you'd lock that account. Right, but for okay. computer accounts, there isn't such a thing. It, it's not enabled. Um, wow. So, But if you're keeping an ah. eye on those accounts on the domain and saying, hey, someone's trying a whole bunch of you know, possibilities yeah. here, uh, you might be able to catch it. I mean, I don't know exactly what it would take in order to do that. You probably want your Windows logging turned all the way up to see it. Uh, I think they actually did in the patch add logging for certain types of events that would help you detect an attempt to do this. But at that point, you've, you've patched already. Right. Okay. Yeah. In theory, it should be very detectable if you're watching. But 
The downside is those 256 requests that I talked about before should only take about three seconds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah no. that's that, crazy. That's those things in the paper you're reading, you go, oh my God. Yeah, wow. Oh, this, is, this is crazy. So it's a good wake up call um, for a lot of companies who, who are on like a serious patch schedule. Um, you know, it, it gives them an opportunity to say, hey, let's take a look at all the other controls we have set, make sure our logging is, is in place and that we're logging the right um, Windows event IDs and, and make sure that we have that covered so we can catch this before that patch comes through or we're hoping they would break their cycle once this patch comes in just to be covered, right? I mean, yes, I, it's, I would, it's a good wake really up call. I recommend that you, you, you issue this as a, a critical. If you've got a, yeah. a patching program within the company, this is at the top of your list right now. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. This is a good one, Matt. Thank you. Glad it found it. Glad company found it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.